みなさんこんにちはあかりーず Heart Read Aloud へようこそ Hi everyone Welcome to Akari's Heart Read Aloud 私はホストのあかりです英語の文を朗読してくださるのは私の友人であるアリスさんです Akari is your host and I'm her friend Alice 私はハワイのマウイ島で暮らしながら日々感じたこと思ったことを英語と日本語で綴ってきましたアカリは自分の人生をこのポッドキャストではそれらの書き物を英語と日本語の両方で読み上げます。英語を学んでいる方にも日本語を学んでいる方にとってもリスニングの力を伸ばす助けになるかと思います。誰かの日記を聞くようなものと思っていただければわかりやすいかなと思います。また、どちらの言語も学んでいないという方にも楽しんでいただければ幸いです。In this podcast, the journal will be read in both Japanese and English. So, if you want to improve your listening skills in either language, this podcast will provide a rich source of learning material. It's like listening to someone's diary. Also, we hope that it's enjoyable for you even if you're not currently learning either language. 前半は日本語を学ばれている方よ。後半は英語を学ばれている方よとなっております。In each episode, the first half is for those of you studying Japanese, and the second half is for friends who are studying English. 前半も後半も最初に皆さんが勉強されている言語のみのテキストを聞けるようになっていますまずはどれくらいわかるかなと聞いてみてくださいその後に段落ごとに日本語英語もしくは英語日本語と続きますそれを聞いて自分のリスニングがどうであったか答え合わせをしてみてください。In both sections, you can listen to the script in the target language only first.You can give it a try and see how much you understand.Then you can listen to Japanese text followed by English or vice versa, a paragraph at a time.This way, you can check how accurate your listening was. それぞれのエピソードにはチャプターを設定してありますのでそちらからお好きなセクションに行けるようになっておりますこのチャプターという機能は現在 Apple Podcast と私どものサイトのみで使えるようですまた原稿にはそれぞれのセクションの時間タイムスタンプを明記してあります Each episode has chapters for your convenience, which lets you jump to a particular section of an episode. For now, this feature seems to be supported only on Apple Podcasts and on my website. Also, the transcripts have the time listed next to each section. それぞれのエピソードの最後には出てきた単語や慣用語の説明もあります。At the end of each episode, We will explain a couple of vocabulary words and idioms from the episode. ウェブサイトでは原稿が日本語と英語の両方で読めるようになっていますので、あかり translations.com へ行ってみてください。You can visit akaritranslations.com and you will see both English and Japanese transcripts. Again, that's a k a r i Translations.com ここからは日本語を学ばれている方用のセクションです。Here comes a section for those of you studying Japanese. 英語を学ばれている方はこのエピソードの後半へ行ってください。チャプター機能をお使いになると簡単に行けます。If you are learning English, Please go to the second half of this episode. 
If you use the chapter feature, you can quickly get there. それでは第8回のエピソードの始まりです。Now, let's get into the eighth episode. 今回のお話はいつもより長いので、ポッドキャストを2つのエピソードに分けてお伝えいたします。今回はお話の前半です。This story is longer than usual, so I'll share it over two separate podcast episodes. This one is the first half. Here we go. Weoka san wa mo jubun yatte iru to mo imasu yo. So itte kure ta no wa koko san nen se no toki no tan nin no sen se datta. Hogo sha men dan de no ha ha e no kotoba datta. 高校2年生の後半から私は登校拒否をしていたきっといろいろ理由はあったのだろうけど自覚していたものは摂食障害と人がたくさんいるところにいられなくなっていたことだ生徒数の多い高校だったので体育館に全校生徒が集まる時などはめまいと動悸がした高校の先生たちが言うように4年生大学に進んで仕事に就くだけが幸せになる道とは思えないこのままコンベヤベルトに乗せられて気がついたら社会の歯車の一部になって抜け出せないなんてことになるんじゃないかもちろんこの世界の一員として私なりの貢献はしたいでも私が本当に学びたいことはどの大学のパンフレットにも書いていないもう少しゆっくり考えたいでも学校ではその時間は与えてくれないクラスメイトの中にはとりあえず大学に行ってから何をするか考えるという子もいてそうかそういう手もあるのかと思ったでも大学はお金がかかるはっきりした目標がない状態で入って親に無駄なお金を使わせるわけにはいかない立ち止まる必要があったのだろうそれが登校拒否という形で現れていたのだと思うでも学校に行っていないことに引け目や罪悪感も感じていて摂食障害もつらくて大好きな両親にも心配させて普通じゃない自分を責めて毎日のように泣いていた「明日こそは学校に行こう」と決意を胸に床に入る「起きたら今日は学校に行くぞ」と自分を奮い立たせ制服に着替え朝食を食べ行く用意をするのだけどいざ玄関に立つと立ちすくみドアノブを回せない玄関にうずくまる私を横目に弟が中学校に出かけていく。弟にとっては玄関でうずくまる姉ノズはもう見慣れた光景だろう弟が玄関を開けるときに一緒に出ていこう明暗だよしそうしようでも弟の背中越しの外の世界を垣間見てひるんでしまうまたうずくまる情けなくて泣けてくるなんで自分はこんなことになっているんだろう父はその頃隣の県に単身赴任をしており同じ屋根の下では暮らしておらず週末は家族の顔を見に帰ってきてくれていた母も父もそんな私を責め立てることもなく寄り添ってくれ母は私が持っていくかどうかもわからないお弁当を毎朝早く起きて作っててくれていた。摂食障害真っただ中の私の弁当箱は園児が使うものだった「これで足りるの?」と母が一度聞いたことがある「足りる私はそれ以上聞かないで」と言わんばかりに言い放った「きっといろいろ言って食べなくなるよりはマシ」とでも思ったのか母はその小さなお弁当箱に入るだけの栄養のある食べ物と愛をぎゅうぎゅうに詰め込んでくれたそれだけはいつも完食していた
ちなみにそのお弁当箱を私はマウイに持ってきている料理の残り物などを保存するため使っている時々玄関の外に出ることに成功し鉛のように感じる自転車のペダルをこいで片道自転車で20分の道のりの半分ほど行ってどうしてもそれ以上進めず途中で情けなさに泣きながら帰ってくることもあった母はその度に高校に電話をして「体調が芳しくないのでお休みします」と連絡をしてくれていた「しないと無断欠席になるので」ある日はなんとか学校までたどり着くことができたのだけど足はペダルをこぐことをやめずそのまま校門を通り過ぎてしまったありゃりゃーと思ったけどもう時は遅しあまりにも気持ちのいい天気だったのだあんなに外の空気を気持ちよく感じたのは久しぶりだったのでそのまま高知市の鏡川沿いに伊野の方へ向かって走り手頃な土手の原っぱを見つけてそこに寝そべった季節はいつだったのだろう覚えていない私は花粉症持ちだけどくしゃみをしていなかったから春ではなかったのだろうあまりにも青空がきれいで風が気持ちよくて花が咲いていて仰向けで雲が流れていくのを見ていたらそのまま空に吸い込まれていくような気がした草の匂いが心を落ち着かせてくれたその日遅刻はしたものの学校には行けたのだ担任の外浦先生は髪を短くまとめてあるその年代の女性にしては背の高い国語の先生であった先生のきれいな字を今でも覚えている「払い」「羽」止めがしっかりと見受けられる一文字一文字が黒板に書かれていく様を見るのが好きだったそれだけでも心が落ち着いた外浦先生は好きだったけれど3年生になっても相変わらず私は登校拒否をしていた勉強は好きだったありがたいことに素敵な友達もいたしいじめがあったわけでもないただどうしても行けなかった。当時のクラスメートのみんなに申し訳なかったなぁと思うことは卒業アルバムのためのクラスごとの写真撮影だ欠席者がいるクラスは撮影が延期されるのだきっと一生残る写真のためみんな髪の毛をセットしたりそれなりに普段よりも気を使って投稿していた子がほとんどだと思うそれなのに私が欠席のため延期されるのだそれが1回ではなく2回ほどあったらしくそれを後で知った時申し訳ないことをしたと思った私はきっと写真の右上か左上の方に自分の顔だけ乗るのだろうぐらいに思っていたのだそれも目立って嫌だけど学校に行けないのだから仕方ないと万が一高知県立高知西高校2001年卒業の外浦先生のクラスであった方がこれを聞かれているとしたらこの場を借りて「何度も空振りさせて申し訳ありませんでした」とお伝えしたいここからは日本語と英語が段落ごとに交互に続きます。Now you will hear Japanese are followed by English one paragraph at a time. それでは第8回のエピソードの始まりです。Now let's get into the eighth episode. 今回のお話はいつもより長いので、ポッドキャストを2つのエピソードに分けてお伝えいたします。今回はお話の前半です。This story is longer than usual, so I'll share it over two separate podcast episodes. This one is the first half. Here we go. 上岡さんはもう十分やっていると思いますよ。そう言ってくれたのは高校3年生の時の担任の先生だった。保護者面談での母への言葉だった。
Miss Ueoka is already doing enough, said Mrs. Satura, who was my senior year's homeroom teacher. She said it to my mom at a parent-teacher conference. Halfway through my junior year, I was unable to go to school. There were probably a few reasons, and what I was aware of then is that I had eating disorders and was not able to be around many people. The high school I went to had 900 to 1,000 students, and once a week we had a school assembly at the gym, surrounded by many people. I felt dizzy, and my heart palpitated faster. まあ、高校の先生たちが言うように4年生大学に進んで仕事に就くだけが幸せになる道とは思えない。I was thinking, I don't think I can go to a four-year university and get a good job. This can't be the only way to happiness, like the teachers say. このままコンベアベルトに乗せられて気がついたら社会の歯車の一部になって抜け出せないなんてことになるんじゃないか。I wonder what would happen if I had listened to them and followed their guidance without giving it any thought. Would I become one of society's well-oiled gears that I couldn't escape from? もちろんこの世界の一員として私なりの貢献はしたい。でも私が本当に学びたいことはどの大学のパンフレットにも書いていない。Of course, I wanted to contribute to society, even in a small way, but what I wanted to study did not seem to be written in any of the college brochures. もう少しゆっくり考えたい。でも学校ではその時間は与えてくれない。I wish I could take time to think more, but the school doesn't give us any time to think by bombarding us with so many quizzes and exams. クラスメイトの中にはとりあえず大学に行ってから何をするか考えるという子もいて、そうか、そういう手もあるのかと思った。Some of my classmates said, I'll go to college and then I'll think more about what I want to do.I see. That's one way to go about it, I thought. でも、大学はお金がかかる。はっきりした目標がない状態で入って、親に無駄なお金を使わせるわけにはいかない。But going to college or university costs money. And I don't want to waste my parents' money by going without a clear reason. 立ち止まる必要があったのだろう。それが登校拒否という形で現れていたのだと思う。I guess I needed to slow down. And the desire to do so seemed to appear in my inability to attend school. Although I genuinely tried to go. でも学校に行っていないことに引け目や罪悪感も感じていて接触障害もつらくて大好きな両親にも心配させて普通じゃない自分を責めて毎日のように泣いていた。I cried every day, feeling badly and guilty for not going to school. Dealing with eating disorders, making my parents worry, and blaming myself for not being quote unquote normal. At night, I went to bed thinking, Tomorrow I will go to school. いざ玄関に立つと立ちすくみドアノブを回せない。When I woke up, I said to myself, All right, here I go.I changed into my school uniform, ate breakfast and got ready.However, when I stood at the front door, my legs got fixated and my hand would not turn the doorknob. 玄関にうずくまる私を横目に
弟が中学校に出かけていく弟にとっては玄関でうずくまる姉ノズはもう見慣れた光景だろう My younger brother left for his middle school passing by me who was crouching down for him my frozen stance was a familiar scene 弟が玄関を開けるときに一緒に出て行こう。明暗だ。よし、そうしよう。Oh, I know. When he opens the door, I'll follow him and go out with him. Oh, it's a good idea. Yeah, I'll do that. でも、弟の背中越しの外の世界を垣間見て、ひるんでしまう。またうずくまる。情けなくて、泣けてくる。But one glimpse of the world over his shoulder, and I winced and froze. なんで自分はこんなことになっているんだろう I sobbed, feeling pathetic. What am I doing? What's become of me? 父はその頃、隣の県に単身赴任をしており、同じ屋根の下では暮らしておらず、週末は家族の顔を見に帰ってきてくれていた。My dad was living in the next prefecture on a company job assignment. It's common in Japan for the rest of the family to stay behind and let the children finish school or, or for other reasons. He came home over the weekend to see us. 母も父もそんな私を責め立てることもなく寄り添ってくれ。母は私が持っていくかどうかもわからないお弁当を毎朝早く起きて作ってくれていた。My parents did not give me a hard time and held space for me.My mom woke up early every morning to make lunch for me.Although there was no guarantee that I would take it to school. 接触障害真っただ中の私の弁当箱は園児が使うものだった。My lunch box was the size of a preschooler. これで足りるのと母がが一度聞いたことがある足りる私はそれ以上聞かないでと言わんばかりに言い放った。Would this be enough? My mother asked me once.Yes, I answered adamantly, as if to disallow any further inquiries from her. きっといろいろ言って食べなくなるよりはマシとでも思ったのか。母はその小さなお弁当箱に。入るだけの栄養のある食べ物と愛をぎゅうぎゅうに詰め込んでくれたそれだけはいつも完食していた Probably she thought it was better than quarreling and making me not eat at all so she packed as much nutritious food and love as possible into that small lunch box every morning I ate the whole thing every day even though I didn't eat much else ちなみにそのお弁当箱を私はマウイに持ってきている。料理の残り物などを保存するため使っている。By the way, I brought that lunch box to Maui. I use it regularly to store leftover food and such. 時々玄関の外に出ることに成功し、鉛のように感じる自転車のペダルを漕いで、片道自転車で20分の道のりの半分ほど行ってどうしてもそれ以上進めず途中で情けなさに泣きながら帰ってくることもあった Occasionally I managed to get outside the door I pushed down the bicycle pedal which felt heavy as lead and rode about halfway to school each way was about 20 minutes when I couldn't go any further I turned around And came home crying, feeling defeated. 母はそのたびに高校に電話をして、体調がかんばしくないのでお休みしますと連絡をしてくれていた。しないと無断欠席になるので。Then my mom would call the high school and let them know that I'd be absent that day due to my not feeling well. Otherwise, it would have been recorded as absence without notice, and that would be a problem. ある日は何とか学校までたどり着くことができたのだけど足はペダルをこぐことをやめずそのまま校門を通り過ぎてしまったありゃりゃと思ったけどもう時は遅しあまりにも気持ちのいい天気だったのだ
あんなに外の空気を気持ちよく感じたのは久しぶりだったのでそのまま高知市の鏡川沿いに伊野の方へ向かって走り手頃な土手の原っぱを見つけてそこに寝そべった。I managed to get to school one day, but my feet kept pushing the bicycle forward and past the school gate. Oopsie! I thought it was too late. It was a beautiful day, and I hadn't felt that good breathing in the air, so I kept riding the bicycle along the Kagami River of Kochi City, heading toward Ino Town. I found a nice field and a river embankment, and I laid down. くしゃみをしていなかったから、春ではなかったのだろう。あまりにも青空がきれいで、風が気持ちよくて、花が咲いていて、仰向けで雲が流れていくのを見ていたら、そのまま空に吸い込まれていくような気がした。草の匂いが心を落ち着かせてくれた。I wonder what season it was. I don't remember. I had hay fever, but I wasn't sneezing, so I suspect it wasn't spring. The sky was beautifully blue. The breeze felt amazing. The flowers were blooming, and the white clouds were drifting. I felt like merging into the sky, and the fragrance of the grass comforted me. その日、遅刻はしたものの、学校には行けたのだ。Though I was late, I made it to school that day. 担任の外浦先生は髪を短くまとめてあるその年代の女性にしては背の高い国語の先生であった先生のきれいな字を今でも覚えている My homeroom teacher, Mrs. Satura, was tall for the generation's females and kept her hair short. And she was a Japanese language teacher. 払い、羽止めがしっかりと見受けられる一文字一文字が黒板に書かれていく様を見るのが好きだったそれだけでも心が落ち着いた I still clearly remembered her beautiful handwriting I loved watching her write letters on the blackboard executing each stroke intentionally and naturally It was almost a zen-like performing art Watching it Had a calming effect on me. 外浦先生は好きだったけれど3年生になっても相変わらず私は登校拒否をしていた勉強は好きだったありがたいことに素敵な友達もいたしいじめがあったわけでもないただどうしても行けなかった「I liked her a lot but I still couldn't bring myself to becoming a regular attendee in my senior year」I liked learning and studying. I had wonderful friends. I was not being bullied or teased. I just could not go. 当時のクラスメイトのみんなに申し訳なかったなぁと思うことは卒業アルバムのためのクラスごとの写真撮影だ。欠席者がいるクラスは撮影が延期されるのだ。きっと一生残る写真のためみんな髪の毛をセットしたりそれなりに普段よりも気を使って投稿していた子がほとんどだと思うそれなのに私が欠席のため延期されるのだそれが1回ではなく2回ほどあったらしくそれを後で知った時申し訳ないことをしたと思った To all of my classmates back then, there's one thing I want to apologize for. For the graduation album, each class had a group photo taken. I didn't know this back then, but when someone was absent, the photo shoot was postponed to the next day. I bet that most everyone came to school after setting their hair nicely because the photo would remain for the rest of their lives. And it happened more than once, apparently. 私はきっと写真の右上か左上の方に自分の顔だけ乗るのだろうぐらいに思っていたのだそれも目立って嫌だけど学校に行けないのだから仕方ないと I thought my face would be cropped and pasted on the corner of the group shot 
which stands out even more, so I wasn't fond of that idea. But I accepted it as I couldn't go to school. Mangaichi, Coach Kenlitz, Coach Nishikoko, Nisen Ichinen Sotsugyo no, Sotoura Sensei no Kras de Atta Kataga, Koreo Kikarete Iruto Stara, Konoba o Karite, Nando mo Karabri Sasete, Moshiwake Arima Sendesta, To Otstai Stai. If anyone in the class of 2001, in Mrs. Sotura's class, is listening to this, please accept my apology for possibly messing up your best hair day. 今回の日本語レッスン、保護者。保護者は英語では guardian です。保護者には未成年の子供を守り育てる義務があります。親が保護者であることがほとんどですが、必ずしもそうとは限りません。日本の教育現場では、学校側は親を含め保護者という言葉を使います。In English, 保護者 is a guardian who has an obligation to protect and nurture a minor. Often parents are 保護者 but not always. Sometimes individuals other than parents become guardians of children. In Japanese educational settings, schools often address parents and guardians using the word hogosha. Nasake nai. Kore wa i keyoshi de. Ego de wa shameful ya pitiful to you imi des. Nasake wa meishi de. 思いやりという意味があります。なので、情けないは思いやりがない、資料にかけるという意味になります。彼は情けない顔でうなずいたなどと使います。This is an E adjective. In English, it means shameful, pitiful, or pathetic. Nasa ke is a noun and means thoughtfulness or consideration. As you know, nai means none, so nasake nai means no consideration. When there is no consideration, it is disappointing, so nasake nai turned into shameful or disgraceful. Kare wa nasake nai kao de unazuita, to ye ba, he nodded, looking shameful, to yu imi ni narimas. Go shitsmon ya, komento nado, gozai mashtara. サイトのコンタクトフォームにてご記入くださいそれではまた次回お会いできますことを楽しみにしています Please let me know if you have any questions or comments through the contact form at akaritranslations.com That's A-K-A-R-I translations.com We look forward to seeing you next time Here comes a section for those of you studying English. ここからは英語を学ばれている方用のセクションです。If you're learning Japanese, please go to the first half of this episode.If you use the chapter feature, you can quickly get there. 日本語を学ばれている方はこのエピソードの前半へ行ってください。チャプター機能をお使いになると簡単に行けます。This story is longer than usual, so I'll share it over two separate podcast episodes. This one is the first half. Here we go. 今回のお話はいつもより長いので、ポッドキャストを二つのエピソードに分けてお伝えいたします。今回はお話の前半です。Miss Ueoka is already doing enough, said Mrs. Satura. Who was my senior year's homeroom teacher? She said it to my mom at a parent teacher conference. Halfway through my junior year, I was unable to go to school. There were probably a few reasons, and what I was aware of then is that I had eating disorders and was not able to be around many people. The high school I went to had 900 to 1,000 students, and once a week we had a school assembly at the gym, surrounded by many people. <laughs> I felt dizzy and my heart palpitated faster. I was thinking, 
I don't think I can go to a four-year university and get a good job. This can't be the only way to happiness, like the teachers say. I wonder what would happen if I'd listened to them and followed their guidance without giving it any thought. Would I become one of society's well-oiled gears that I couldn't escape from? Of course, I wanted to contribute to society, even in a small way. But what I wanted to study did not seem to be written in any of the college brochures. I wish I could take time to think more. But the school doesn't give us any time to think by bombarding us with so many quizzes and exams. Some of my classmates said, I'll go to college, and then I'll think more about what I want to do. I see. That's one way to go about it, I thought. But going to college or university costs money. And I don't want to waste my parents' money by going without a clear reason. I guess I needed to slow down. And the desire to do so seemed to appear in my inability to attend school, although I genuinely tried to go. I cried every day, feeling badly and guilty for not going to school, dealing with eating disorders, making my parents worry, and blaming myself for not being quote-unquote normal. At night, I went to bed thinking, tomorrow I will go to school. When I woke up, I said to myself, all right, here I go. I changed into my school uniform, ate breakfast, and got ready. However, when I stood at the front door, my legs got fixated, and my hand would not turn the doorknob. My younger brother left for his middle school, passing by me who was crouching down. For him, my frozen stance was a familiar scene. Oh, I know. When he opens the door, I'll follow him and go out with him. Oh, it's a good idea. Yeah, I'll do that. But one glimpse of the world over his shoulder, and I winced and froze. I sobbed, feeling pathetic. What am I doing? What's become of me? My dad was living in the next prefecture on a company job assignment. It's common in Japan for the rest of the family to stay behind and let the children finish school or, or for other reasons. He came home over the weekend to see us. My parents did not give me a hard time and held space for me. My mom woke up early every morning to make lunch for me, although there was no guarantee that I would take it to school. My lunchbox was the size of a preschooler. Would this be enough? My mother asked me once. Yes, I answered adamantly, as if to disallow any further inquiries from her. Probably she thought it was better than quarreling and making me not eat at all, so she packed as much nutritious food and love as possible into that small lunchbox every morning. I ate the whole thing every day, even though I didn't eat much else. By the way, I brought that lunchbox to Maui, I use it regularly to store leftover food and such. Occasionally, I manage to get outside the door. I pushed down the bicycle pedal, which felt heavy as lead, and rode about halfway to school. Each way was about 20 minutes. When I couldn't go any further, I turned around and came home crying, feeling defeated. Then my mom would call the high school and let them know that I'd be absent that day due to my not feeling well. Otherwise, it would have been recorded as absence without notice, and that would be a problem. I managed to get to school one day, but my feet kept pushing the bicycle forward and past the school gate. Oopsie, I thought. It was too late. It was a beautiful day, and I hadn't felt that good breathing in the air. So I kept riding the bicycle along the Kagami River of Kochi City, heading toward Ino Town. I found a nice field and a river embankment, and I laid down. I wonder what season it was. I don't remember. I had hay fever, but I wasn't sneezing, so I suspect it wasn't spring. The sky was beautifully blue. The breeze felt amazing. 
the flowers were blooming and the white clouds were drifting. I felt like merging into the sky and the fragrance of the grass comforted me. Though I was late, I made it to school that day. My homeroom teacher, Mrs. Satura, was tall for the generation's females and kept her hair short, and she was a Japanese language teacher. I still clearly remembered her beautiful handwriting. I loved watching her write letters on the blackboard, executing each stroke intentionally and naturally. It was almost a zen-like performing art. Watching it had a calming effect on me. I liked her a lot, but I still couldn't bring myself to becoming a regular attendee in my senior year. I liked learning and studying. I had wonderful friends. I was not being bullied or teased. I just could not go. To all of my classmates back then, there's one thing I want to apologize for. For the graduation album, each class had a group photo taken. I didn't know this back then, but when someone was absent, the photo shoot was postponed to the next day. I bet that most everyone came to school after setting their hair nicely because the photo would remain for the rest of their lives. And it happened more than once, apparently. I thought my face would be cropped and pasted on the corner of the group shot, which stands out even more, so I wasn't fond of that idea. But I accepted it as I couldn't go to school. If anyone in the class of 2001, in Mrs. Sotura's class, is listening to this, please accept my apology for possibly messing up your best hair day. Now you will hear English followed by Japanese, one paragraph at a time. ここからは英語と日本語が段落ごとに交互に続きます。Miss Ueoka is already doing enough, said Mrs. Satura, who was my senior year's homeroom teacher. She said it to my mom at a parent teacher conference. Ueoka さんはもう十分やっていると思いますよ。そう言ってくれたのは。高校三年生の時の担任の先生だった。保護者面談での母への言葉だった。Halfway through my junior year, I was unable to go to school. There were probably a few reasons, and what I was aware of then is that I had eating disorders and was not able to be around many people. The high school I went to had 900 to 1,000 students, and once a week we had a school assembly at the gym, surrounded by many people. I felt dizzy, and my heart palpitated faster. 高校2年生の後半から私は登校拒否をしていた。きっといろいろ理由はあったのだろうけど、自覚していたものは摂食障害と、人がたくさんいるところにいられなくなっていたことだ。生徒数の多い高校だったので、体育館に全校生徒が集まるときなどは、めまいと動機がした。I was thinking, I don't think I can go to a four-year university and get a good job. This can't be the only way to happiness, like the teachers say. 高校の先生たちが言うように、四年生大学に進んで仕事に就くだけが幸せになる道とは思えない。I wonder what would happen if I'd listened to them and followed their guidance without giving it any thought. Would I become one of society's well-oiled gears that I couldn't escape from? このままコンベアベルトに乗せられて、気がついたら社会の歯車の一部になって。抜け出せないなんてことになるんじゃないか。Of course, I wanted to contribute to society, even in a small way. But what I wanted to study did not seem to be written in any of the college brochures. もちろん、この世界の一員として、私なりの貢献はしたい。でも、私が本当に学びたいことは、どの大学のパンフレットにも書いていない。I wish I could take time to think more. 
but the school doesn't give us any time to think by bombarding us with so many quizzes and exams. もう少しゆっくり考えたい。でも学校ではその時間は与えてくれない。Some of my classmates said, I'll go to college and then I'll think more about what I want to do. I see. That's one way to go about it, I thought. クラスメイトの中にはとりあえず大学に行ってから何をするか考えるという子もいてそうかそういう手もあるのかと思った。But going to college or university costs money. And I don't want to waste my parents' money by going without a clear reason. でも大学はお金がかかる。はっきりした目標がない状態で入って親に無駄なお金を使わせるわけにはいかない。I guess I needed to slow down. And the desire to do so seemed to appear in my inability to attend school, although I genuinely tried to go. 立ち止まる必要があったのだろう。それが登校拒否という形で現れていたのだと思う。I cried every day, feeling badly and guilty for not going to school, dealing with eating disorders, making my parents worry, and blaming myself for not being quote unquote normal. でも学校に行っていないことに、引け目や罪悪感も感じていて、摂食障害も辛くて、大好きな両親にも心配させて、普通じゃない自分を責めて、毎日のように泣いていた。At night, I went to bed thinking, tomorrow I will go to school. 明日こそは学校に行こうと決意を胸に床に入る。When I woke up, I said to myself, All right, here I go. I changed into my school uniform, ate breakfast, and got ready. However, when I stood at the front door, my legs got fixated. And my hand would not turn the doorknob. 起きたら、今日は学校に行くぞと自分を奮い立たせ、制服に着替え、朝食を食べ、行く用意をするのだけど、いざ玄関に立つと、立ちすくみ、ドアノブを回せない。My younger brother left for his middle school, passing by me who was crouching down. For him, my frozen stance was a familiar scene. 玄関にうずくまる私を横目に弟が中学校に出かけていく。弟にとっては玄関でうずくまる姉の図はもう見慣れた光景だろう。Oh, I know. When he opens the door, I'll follow him and go out with him. Oh, it's a good idea. Yeah, I'll do that. 弟が玄関を開けるときに一緒に出て行こう。明暗だ。よし、そうしよう。But one glimpse of the world over his shoulder, and I winced and froze. でも、弟の背中越しの外の世界を垣間見て、ひるんでしまう。またうずくまる。情けなくて、泣けてくる。I sobbed, feeling pathetic. What am I doing? What's become of me? なんで自分は、こんなことになっているんだろう。My dad was living in the next prefecture on a company job assignment. It's common in Japan for the rest of the family to stay behind and let the children finish school or, or for other reasons. He came home over the weekend to see us. 父はその頃、隣の県に単身赴任をしており、同じ屋根の下では暮らしておらず、週末は家族の顔を見に帰ってきてくれていた。My parents did not give me a hard time and held space for me.My mom woke up early every morning to make lunch for me, although there was no guarantee that I would take it to school. 母も父もそんな私を責め立てることもなく、寄り添ってくれ。母は私が持っていくかどうかもわからないお弁当を、毎朝早く起きて、作ってくれていた。My lunchbox was the size of a preschooler. 接触障害真っ只中の私の弁当箱は、園児が使うものだった。Would this be enough? My mother asked me once.Yes, I answered adamantly, 
as if to disallow any further inquiries from her. これで足りるのと母が一度聞いたことがある。足りる。私はそれ以上聞かないでと言わんばかりに言い放った。Probably she thought it was better than quarreling and making me not eat at all. So she packed as much nutritious food and love as possible into that small lunchbox every morning. I ate the whole thing every day, even though I didn't eat much else. きっといろいろ言って食べなくなるよりはマシとでも思ったのか。母はその小さなお弁当箱に入るだけの栄養のある食べ物と愛をぎゅうぎゅうに詰め込んでくれた。それだけはいつも完食していた。By the way, I brought that lunchbox to Maui. I use it regularly to store leftover food and such. ちなみにそのお弁当箱を私はマウイに持ってきている。料理の残り物などを保存するため使っている。Occasionally, I managed to get outside the door. I pushed down the bicycle pedal, which felt heavy as lead, and rode about halfway to school. Each way was about twenty minutes. When I couldn't go any further, I turned around and came home crying, feeling defeated. 時々玄関の外に出ることに成功し、鉛のように感じる自転車のペダルを漕いで、片道自転車で二十分の道のりの半分ほど行って、どうしてもそれ以上進めず、途中で情けなさに泣きながら帰ってくることもあった。Then my mom would call the high school and let them know that I'd be absent that day due to my not feeling well. Otherwise, it would have been recorded as absence without notice, and that would be a problem. 母はそのたびに高校に電話をして、体調が芳しくないのでお休みしますと連絡をしてくれていた。しないと無断欠席になるので。I managed to get to school one day, but my feet kept pushing the bicycle forward and past the school gate. Oopsie! I thought it was too late. It was a beautiful day, and I hadn't felt that good breathing in the air. So I kept riding the bicycle along the Kagami River of Kochi City, heading toward Ino Town. I found a nice field and a river embankment, and I laid down. ある日は何とか学校までたどり着くことができたのだけど、足はペダルを漕ぐことをやめず、そのまま校門を通り過ぎてしまった。ありゃありゃと思ったけど、もう時は遅し。あまりにも気持ちのいい天気だったのだ。あんなに外の空気を気持ちよく感じたのは久しぶりだったので、そのまま高知市の鏡川沿いに伊野の方へ向かって走り、手頃な土手の原っぱを見つけて、そこに寝そべった。I wonder what season it was. I don't remember. I had hay fever, but I wasn't sneezing, so I suspect it wasn't spring. The sky was beautifully blue. The breeze felt amazing. The flowers were blooming and the white clouds were drifting. I felt like merging into the sky and the fragrance of the grass comforted me. 季節はいつだったのだろう覚えていない。私は花粉症持ちだけど、くしゃみをしていなかったから、春ではなかったのだろう。あまりにも青空がきれいで、風が気持ちよくて、花が咲いていて、仰向けで雲が流れていくのを見ていたら、そのまま空に吸い込まれていくような気がした。草の匂いが心を落ち着かせてくれた。Though I was late, I made it to school that day. その日、遅刻はしたものの、学校には行けたのだ。My homeroom teacher, Mrs. Satura was tall for the generation's females and kept her hair short. And she was a Japanese language teacher. 担任の外浦先生は髪を短くまとめてあるその年代の女性にしては背の高い国語の先生であった。先生のきれいな字を今でも覚えている。I still clearly remembered her beautiful handwriting. 
I loved watching her write letters on the blackboard, executing each stroke intentionally and naturally. It was almost a zen-like performing art. Watching it had a calming effect on me. Harai, hane, tome ga shikkari to miyukerare ru ichimoji ichimoji ga kokuban ni kakare te iku sama o miru no ga suki datta. Sore dake de mo kokoro ga ochitsuita. I liked her a lot, but I still couldn't bring myself to becoming a regular attendee in my senior year. I liked learning and studying. I had wonderful friends. I was not being bullied or teased. I just could not go. Sotoura 先生は好きだったけれど、三年生になっても相変わらず私は登校拒否をしていた。勉強は好きだった。ありがたいことに素敵な友達もいたしいじめがあったわけでもないただどうしても行けなかった。To all of my classmates back then, there's one thing I want to apologize for. For the graduation album, each class had a group photo taken. I didn't know this back then, but when someone was absent, the photo shoot was postponed to the next day. I bet that most everyone came to school after setting their hair nicely because the photo would remain for the rest of their lives. And it happened more than once, apparently. 当時のクラスメートのみんなに申し訳なかったなぁと思うことは、卒業アルバムのためのクラスごとの写真撮影だ。欠席者がいるクラスは撮影が延期されるのだ。きっと一生残る写真のためみんな髪の毛をセットしたりそれなりに普段よりも気を使って投稿していた子がほとんどだと思うそれなのに私が欠席のため延期されるのだそれが1回ではなく2回ほどあったらしくそれを後で知った時申し訳ないことをしたと思った I thought my face would be cropped and pasted on the corner of the group shot Which stands out even more, so I wasn't fond of that idea. But I accepted it as I couldn't go to school. I was thinking that I was going to go to school. I was thinking that I was going to go to school. If anyone in the class of 2001, in Mrs. Sotura's class, is listening to this, Please accept my apology for possibly messing up your best hair day. Manga 1. Coach Kenritz, Coach Nishi Koko, 2001年卒業の外浦先生のクラスであった方がこれを聞かれているとしたらこの場を借りて何度も空振りさせて申し訳ありませんでしたとお伝えしたい。Here are today's English vocabulary and idioms. Bombard. This is a verb and means continuously attacking something with bombs, shells, or other missiles. It can also mean directing something at someone excessively. When you ask someone too many questions at once, you overwhelm them and bombard them with questions. これは動詞で爆弾や砲弾などのミサイルを使い何かを継続的に攻撃することを意味します。比喩的に使うと誰かに過剰に何かを仕向けるという意味にもなります。一度にたくさんの質問をすると相手を圧倒してしまいますね。そんな時、You are bombarding them with questions と言います。Intentionally. This is an adverb, and it means to do something on purpose or knowingly. If you said, I put a key down there intentionally so that you would see it, it means you didn't put it carelessly or unconsciously. There was a specific purpose behind your action. これは副詞です。意図的にあるいは分かっていて何かをするという意味です。もし、あなたが見えるようにそこに意図的に鍵を置いたといえばそれはあなたが無造作にあるいは無意識に鍵を置いたのではないことを意味しますその行動の背後には特定の目的があったのです 
Please let me know if you have any questions or comments through the contact form at akaritranslations.com. That's A-K-A-R-I translations.com. We look forward to seeing you next time. ご質問やコメントなどございましたら、サイトのコンタクトフォームにてご記入ください。それではまた次回お会いできますことを楽しみにしています。